Well, as cases of monkeypox rise across the U.S. and the demand for vaccinations increase, the government says it's pouring $11 million toward efforts to get some vaccine production placed in Michigan. That money will provide equipment and staffing at a facility in Grand Rapids to actually finish manufacturing the vaccine, which is produced by a Danish company. Joining me now to discuss is ABC News contributor and physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Alok Patel. All right, Doc, so vaccine production at this facility is expected to begin later this year. Too late of a move? Potentially, if we're just looking at vaccine mitigation as a way to stop the spread of monkeypox, where, Kira, we know that right now what seems to be making a bigger difference potentially is that behavioral change. But if we just back it up and we go back to early 2020, we had a supply of COVID-19 vaccines. But remember that the finish and fill, the supply chain is actually what really matters when it comes to widespread distribution. And so I'm glad at least that that's being addressed in this situation and that Grand River Aseptic Manufacturing or GRAM will be able to complete this process. So we can just look at this not only for monkeypox, but in the future, in any future outbreak when we need to kind of boost up that vaccine supply quickly. Right. So the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says that this facility is an effort to improve the domestic capabilities to handle health emergencies, something that the U.S. has been caught flat footed on repeatedly since COVID-19, as we know. So is this the answer? I think this is a, a good step forward in that. And I kind of alluded to this in my first answer, but I do think that it's important that we kind of look at what the supply chain really looks like when it comes to not only vaccines, but when it comes to testing and other medical supplies, such as masks, which we've been talking about for two and a half years. Now, one statement that when the when HHS put out the statement about wanting to support Graham, there also was that notice about not only boosting the amount of supplies for that finish and fill, but also in training new personnel. These are all conversations and important points that we need to have when it comes to the future and protecting us against any future outbreaks of any disease. Well, HHS and the White House are, are now saying that the U.S. currently has enough vaccines to actually hand to vaccinate um, an entire at-risk population estimated now to be about 1.6 million people. So is targeting the most at risk enough to beat the outbreak? It has to be a combination of making sure that we get vaccines to at-risk communities. We also have awareness, we have access to testing, we have the right behavioral measures that people need to do to protect themselves and their communities. But also, especially in light of the new data that came out last week here from the CDC about who is actually getting vaccines, we have to make sure that we not only just say we have enough vaccines for everyone, but that there is an equitable distribution supply. Because remember, we saw that data showing that about 30% of people right now who are infected with monkeypox are black Americans, whereas only 10% of this, this population has gotten a vaccine. That number needs to change. So meanwhile, we've got kids going back to school, and yours is still too young, and the number of uh, pediatric cases recently increased to 18. So are you concerned that this number could rise given the measures or lack thereof uh, in place in schools? You know, I have concern on an individual basis that there may be more cases out there, especially if given the fact that some cases are not being reported right now and schools are definitely a place where kids can come together, they can play, They're, it's naturally a germy environment, and even though my daughter is too young for school, she's not too young for daycare, places where you can come in contact with other kids. Now we gotta be realistic. The cases in the pediatric population, which right now we have 18 reported, there may be more, is way smaller than the overall case count. And it is very rare. Now what is important is that schools out there put, types, put forward some type of policy about what they're going to do, not only to protect kids, but to make sure parents are well aware. There's a school in Georgia who put out a big plan after having one infected child. Is that gonna be things like isolating a child, notifying parents if there's an outbreak, also making sure there's deep hygiene, all this has to go into play so that kids can stay in school and be safe. All right, Dr. Patel, always great to see you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.